use of mathematics today is paper three differential equations. This is a really important question. I'm going to display the question before you guys can start looking at the solution. So pause the video and watch the question before we start. So for those of you who have tried the question, uh, I know the last two parts will create a little bit of trouble, but let's first start with the differential equation part. So first of all, let's do the separation of variables that is pretty straightforward here. And you will have cos squared x dt is equals to e raised to the power 2t dx. Now we know both of the terms are in the wrong place, so I'm going to replace them. So 1 over cos square x dx will be equal to 1 over e raised to the power 2t dt. So now we have successfully separated the variables. Now let's introduce integration sign. Now let's start about integrating uh, these values. Um, so for the left one, you must have memorized the class notes very clearly. And I have done a practice case over there, which every student must memorize, that one over cos square is a really simple integration. If you can identify what this is, this actually is secant square. And now it is just a one step integration from here. And equals to, for e raised to power two t, let's bring that into numerator, and we're going to take e as our operator over there. So for secant square as an operator, the differentiation of box is going to be one, which is present outside. And once that goes away with the integration signs, the integration of secant square is tan x. That is pretty straightforward. So for e as an operator, the box is minus 2t. I need negative 2 over here. So I'm going to plug in minus 1 over 2 outside. Once the differentiation of box is removed along with the integration signs, the integration of e would be negative 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2t. And do not forget the constant of integration. So this is our final integration over here. Now let's put the values of t and x over here. And we will have uh, the value for c. So tan of 0 is equal to minus 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2 times 0 plus c. And from here, I think c will be equal to 1 over 2. So let's plug in that. So tan x is equals to 1 by minus 1 by, so minus 1 by 2 e raised to power minus 2t. I'm going to bring that to denominator as well. e raised to power 2t plus 1 by 2. So this is our final answer. Now, for x, we will have tan inverse of 1 by 2 minus 1 over 2 e raised to power 2t. So this is our final answer for the differential equation. Now for the second part, if you guys can see clearly, the question asks that what happens to the value of x when t becomes very large? So this is a problematic question for any student. So I'm going to show you the technique and then I'm going to show you the general way on how to deal with such a question when they say what happens to one variable when the second variable becomes very large. For that, first of all, let's, become, let's understand what large means. So when this use the word large, this means you're approaching infinity. So this number is going to become so big that it's close to infinity. Now, we know we do not understand infinities in the numerator generally, but whenever infinities are in the denominator, they will result in a zero. For example, if t becomes very large over here, you guys can see that the denominator of this fraction will become very large. And eventually this fraction, this whole fraction will reduce to a zero. And the value of x will then be tan inverse of 1 over 2. So that is the value of x when t becomes very large. So whenever you're trying to make a variable very large, that basically means you tend to go towards infinity. And for that purpose, you must have that variable in some sort of a denominator for a fraction. So if it was negative 2t, I brought it in the denominator so that in the next part, when I increase the denominator, this whole fraction will go to 0. So this is the general technique to bring one variable which is very large. This last part of the question asks us 
explain why x increases as t increases. So we need to show that x and t has an increasing relationship. We have seen in paper one that for increasing relationships, for increasing functions, the derivative is always positive. So from the first equation, if I make x as subject, the dx by dt as subject, so that would become cos square x over e raised to power 2t. I can show that dx over dt is basically cos x over e raised to power t whole square. That is because this square can be used as e raised to power t whole square and this square can be used as cos t whole square, cos x whole square. Now we can prove that this value is always positive because there is a square over it and hence whenever x increases, t, in, uh, t will increase, whenever t increases, x will always increase because they have an increasing relationship. For an increasing function, the derivative should be positive. And we have shown that this value cannot be negative. So this is an entire differential equation question. I hope you have really liked this because the last two parts are always problematic for students. If you have liked this video, do share it with your friends who have not seen this solution yet. And if you have any queries, do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.